New MacBook Pro equals new minimal desk setup. Sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> hey, I'm Jerry. And yes, the new MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips are phenomenal machines. There's so many great things to love about them from their new design and their upgraded keyboard, the liquid retina XDR display with ProMotion, a new or old port layout, depending on how you look at it. And of course, that brand new chip which is what really makes these pro machines pro. But because these machines are so good for professional work, you probably want to create a nice little desk setup to actually get some work done. So I commandeered my daughter's old playroom, took out some artwork unbefitting of a professional workspace, and got to work creating a new minimal desk setup. For this setup, I'm using a fantastic glass top sit-stand desk from FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot sent me this desk to try out and it was really easy to put together. It comes in just two pieces so you don't have to put the legs together, which is nice if you've ever assembled desks before. FlexiSpot has so many different desk options, but this glass top desk in white is very clean and modern. There's a large drawer for storing notebooks, cables, or other desk accessories that feels solid and slides really smooth. The drawer has sort of a soft close to it so it doesn't slam but also stays open or closed wherever you want it to. On the right side, you have two USB-A ports and one USB-C port for charging devices like phones and tablets. The desk is 48 inches wide by 24 inches deep, and it's just the right size for a nice clean setup. This is a motorized height adjustable desk that can go from 28.3 inches to 47.6 inches with the touch of a button. You can raise the desk manually with the up-down buttons, and you can set up to four memory positions. To do that, Use the up-down buttons to set the height you want, then press and hold the memory button. Now all you need to do is press the memory button and the desk will automatically adjust to the desired height, slowing down just as it reaches the set number. I'm currently using an Aeron chair from Herman Miller and I absolutely love it. It's an expensive chair, but everything is customizable on it, including the height, tilt, armrests, and back support. You can fully recline if you want to change things up to relax for a minute, or go fully forward with a focused work posture. For someone who doesn't wanna spend a stupid amount of money on a chair, I also have an Amazon commercial desk, which I used for about two years. It's pretty comfortable as well, but not quite as adjustable as the Aeron. It fits me just about right as someone who isn't very tall, and my only complaint is that the arms can wobble and make a little noise. The MacBook Pro is sitting on a silver aluminum laptop stand from Novu that I got from Amazon. This stand is very sturdy with a solid base and can be adjusted in a number of ways. By loosening the knob on the side, you can raise and lower the stand. The pillar can swivel left and right, and the platform can tilt quite a bit to accommodate any angle. The platform also has rubber pads on the flat part and on the front lip where the laptop rests against it. The color of this stand is silver and it matches pretty well with the silver MacBook Pro and other items on the desk. You can also get the stand in a space gray from a number of other companies, so I will leave a link down below to both colors. The stand is really good when you want to use the built-in display on the MacBook and hold it up right next to an external display. For my main display, I'm using a Dell S2722QC. This is a 27-inch 4K IPS panel running at 60 Hertz that is capable of up to a billion colors with 99% sRGB coverage. This is a very good display at under $380 and includes two HDMI outputs, along with DisplayPort through USB-C, which is perfect for the new MacBooks. With a single cable, you can connect the display, getting up to 4K resolution and get up to 65 watts of power delivery charging, which is more than enough for general computing needs. The display can tilt up and down, swivel left and right, and raise up and down to find the most comfortable angle. It can also rotate vertically too. There's two USB ports on the display, one on the back and one underneath on the front, which is perfect for a USB mouse dongle. And there's three watt speakers built in. Overall, I've been using this display for a few weeks now in anticipation of using it with the new MacBooks. And honestly, I like it a lot. It's not 5K and it's not a high refresh rate, but it's a good display with good colors and I use it scaled at 1440p to match the display resolution of the 5K iMac. I don't use the built-in speakers because they're not any good, and because controlling them requires you to use the built-in display settings. So more on audio in a minute. The display is sitting on a bamboo monitor stand from Calibri. The stand lifts your display up 3.5 inches if you need the display to sit a little bit higher while also providing extra desk space below. 
This is a nice solid stand that does not flex or wobble, and I've been using it for heavier displays too, like the 24 and 27 inch IMAX. And before we get to all of the other items, I wanna remind you that you can use all of this fancy new gear to build out your very own YouTube channel with the help of MKBHD's new YouTube success class. Marquez does a great job of breaking down how he creates a video from idea and script to editing and growing your channel. I loved being able to compare his process to mine and start improving my workflows. I was able to learn new techniques for shooting my videos, including placement of microphones and lighting, and even how to construct a better script. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to learn new skills, including topics on illustration, design, freelancing, filmmaking, and more. Skillshare is for lifelong learners and real working creatives made by other creatives. Millions of us are using these curated classes that are built to fit any schedule and skill level. If you wanna check out Marquez's class, you can do that today, like right now, using the link below. And the first thousand of you will get a free one month trial to Skillshare Premium. And my thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Next up, I'm using the Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. I've always been a fan of the Apple Magic Keyboards and I'm pretty happy with the direction of Apple Keyboards at the moment. I find it comfortable and satisfying to type on and have had no issues with lag or delay. The new models with Touch ID are exactly what I wanted using an external keyboard with a MacBook Pro. I want to be able to sit down, press the Touch ID sensor, and get right to work. It's nice that any fingerprint that you already have registered with the built-in Touch ID on the MacBook Pro also works with the standalone Magic Keyboard when paired and vice versa. If there was one thing I could change about the Magic Keyboard, it would be to add backlighting, but overall, it's a great keyboard. For a mouse, I go back and forth between the Logitech MX Master 3 and the Magic Trackpad. I find both are good for general computing and they both have their own pros. For pros. The MX Master 3 is a great mouse when you want or need precision pointing. It's a full-size mouse that feels good in the hand with physical left and right click buttons unlike the Magic Mouse. The scroll wheel on top can be set to either free scrolling or ratcheting. So if you like the inertial scrolling with a trackpad or magic mouse for scrolling down long pages, it feels similar. There's also a horizontal scroll wheel, which is good for editing stuff on a timeline and two buttons below, which are configurable using the Logitech software. I also like to use the magic trackpad because the gestures are just great. I love being able to pinch to zoom, two finger scroll in any direction and swipe between full screen apps and spaces like when I have my work stuff on one desktop and my personal on another. I usually use it in conjunction with the MX Master 3, but it also works well for much of my work by itself. Right now I have the Magic Keyboard and Trackpad mounted together using the 12 South Magic Bridge. You can place the trackpad on either side of the keyboard. And if you have OCD, this is great if you wanna keep both devices aligned, or if you just wanna sit back and use the keyboard and trackpad on your lap, this is a great little accessory. Below the Magic Keyboard and Mice is a nice little desk mat. I wanted a little pop of color without it being too bright, but this company has a ton of different color options. The mat is a waterproof PU leather that feels great under the mouse, but also has enough grip that the keyboard and trackpad won't move around. The backside is a suede material that is slip resistant, but also soft enough to protect your desk. At about 24 inches by 14 inches, this mat is the perfect size for this desk setup. When it comes to audio, I've been a big fan of the Kanto U2 speakers for some time, and I've shown those in other videos. But for this desk build, I wanted to limit the excess bulk and the speakers built into the newest MacBook Pros are so good that for most of what I do during the day, I just don't need anything else. They are loud and clear and have a good amount of bass for everything from video calls to YouTube and even listening to music throughout the day. If I do need to isolate sound because someone else is home or I need to hear something more clearly, then I have AirPods Max. I finally picked up a pair of these over the summer because they keep going on sale and I absolutely love them. The audio is clear and immersive with great bass that doesn't feel aggressive or annoying after a while. With the noise cancellation, they're great for staying focused on whatever you're doing, no matter what is going on around you. And the transparency mode is just uncanny, allowing you to have a conversation with someone right in front of you without taking them off. Comfort wise, these are the most comfortable over ear headphones I've ever used. And especially as a glasses wearer, I don't feel pain or pressure when they push against the arms of my glasses all day. One of the downsides of the AirPods Max though is that they don't have a power switch. So to get them into sleep mode, you either have to put them back in the case or get something like this AirPods Max stand. I was able to find this stand on Etsy and I'll put a link in the description below, but it's a 3D printed stand that will hold your AirPods Max up with a very minimal look. 
you have the option to buy it with magnets built in that will put the AirPods into deep sleep mode right away, saving your battery. You can also charge them with a lightning cable while sitting in the case. In the back of the case, they even added a spot where you can store the lightning cable when not charging. When you're ready to use the AirPods Max, just lift them off the stand and they'll spring back to life. I have one more thing on my desk setup and that's the Caldigit TS3 Plus. As good as it is to have more ports on the new MacBooks, I still want more. And the TS3 Plus has all of the other ports you might need for getting stuff done with your MacBook Pro, like Ethernet, USB-A ports, and additional USB-C ports. I'm really happy that Apple added an SD slot back to the MacBook Pro, but usually I film with multiple cameras and want to get footage off both of them at the same time. With the TS3 Plus, I can stick one card in the MacBook and one in the CalDigit and quickly pull off 60 to 100 gigabytes of 4K footage. The TS3 Plus is great if you don't wanna keep plugging and unplugging a bunch of things into your computer every time you sit down at the desk and every time you wanna disconnect and go work somewhere else. You can leave speakers, SSDs, and other accessories just attached to the dock and connect a single cable to the MacBook. Even this Dell USB-C display can be connected to the TS3 Plus, allowing the TS3 Plus to connect directly to the laptop and power it with up to 87 watts. So that's my minimal desk setup for getting stuff done. And yes, it works for the 16 inch MacBook Pro too. I like the minimal aspect of it and the simplicity. I find it to be a more relaxing space to work in and less distracting from my regular office slash studio space where I can never seem to keep things organized. My answer always seems to be just add more desks, but I'll try and keep this space a little bit more tidy. The space did feel a little sterile, so I ended up rehanging some precious artwork I had around the house. Now, be sure to let me know, what do you think of this minimal MacBook Pro setup? And hit the subscribe button for more videos on the new MacBook Pros with M1 Max chips, because I got more ideas coming soon. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.